This extraordinary film of an earthquake in Japan was captured in May 1983. But the tectonic drama begins in the five mile deep ocean trenches that ring the Western Pacific. Here, the westward moving Pacific plate sinks beneath Asia, beginning a complex and violent journey back into the hot interior process called subduction. As a result, Japan is one of the most earthquake-riddled places in the world, coping with alien forces that invade at will. Tokyo alone has been devastated nearly once a century for the past 2,000 years. As the plate that was once Pacific seafloor dives some 50 miles beneath Japan, it begins to melt. From this subterranean destruction comes new land as hot magma rises to fuel Japan's many volcanoes. April 1973, an undersea volcano explodes off the south coast of Japan. Scientists from the Tokyo Institute of Technology observe the explosion. From this, new islands are born, created by the plate destruction in Japan's subduction zone. Japan has been called the land of living volcanoes. Its history, a chronicle of tragedy. Yet its people seem to know that their land owes its existence to volcanoes. With stoic resolve, their life goes on, as the Japanese have learned to live with this endless cycle of plate tectonic destruction and rebirth. Along the southern edge of the Asian mainland are India and the Tibetan Plateau, punctuated by the Himalaya Mountains. Here, 29,000 feet above sea level, fossils of ancient marine life are preserved in the rocks. They tell the remarkable story of another plate boundary where continents collide. More than 40 million years ago, the northward movement of the plate carrying India crashed into Asia and the Himalayas were born. Sea rock on the leading edge of India was pushed to the roof of the world. Here, the former island continent is thrust under Asia, creating the Tibetan Plateau, the highest average landmass in the world. Today, the impact continues, pushing Mount Everest ever higher. So intense is the collision that for thousands of miles inland, the Asian continent is being pushed aside as if by a giant snowplow creating powerful unseen forces that can strike without warning. The People's Republic of China is home to nearly a billion people. For centuries, the Chinese have attempted to predict earthquakes, but still the earth can surprise. These seldom seen Chinese motion pictures record the city of Tangshan in northeastern China after the morning of July 28, 1976. Ravaged by a colossal earthquake, 20 square miles of the city collapsed in total ruin. As many as three quarters of a million people died, equivalent to the destruction of cities the size of San Francisco or Memphis. It was the world's most destructive earthquake in 400 years, born of forces more than 2,000 miles away, where India relentlessly drives into and beneath Asia in a dramatic display of plate tectonics. Another kind of plate edge is marked by the San Andreas Fault on the coast of California. Here, the Pacific Plate moves violently past the North American Plate. April 18th, 1906. In a single minute, the Pacific Plate lurched 20 feet northward along the fault, releasing energy that had been building for a century. The earthquake and resulting fires destroyed much of San Francisco.
Today, California's San Andreas is among the most studied faults in the world. A specially equipped NASA jet allows us to see some of its most striking features from the air. Along central California's Carrizo Plain, the fault clearly marks the edge between the Pacific Plate on the left and the North American Plate on the right. Here, as perhaps nowhere else, a boundary between two plates is dramatically visible. The scar of a great tectonic contest as the strength of rock of one plate is pitted against the strength of another. The fault extends from beneath the sea it begins where Baja California has been split from Mexico, runs up on land and splinters California in two for a thousand miles. Despite popular misconception, California will not sink into the Pacific. Instead, it will slide ever northward. In 15 million years, Los Angeles will be a suburb of San Francisco. The Giants and the Dodgers could again be crosstown rivals. Today, the tectonic struggle continues. In cities like Hollister, forces are released slowly and without violence through the gradual creep of the plates. But in contrast, just north along lakes atop the fault, the two plates are sticking, each day building ominous stress. The San Andreas Fault runs through the San Francisco Peninsula out to sea, and then skirts the California coast for another 300 miles. As scientists continue to monitor the state, the cities along the fault will continue to watch and to wait, asking not whether, but when and where. At the California Institute of Technology, computers model the Earth's interior to better understand the forces that keep the plates in constant motion. So the, uh, Geophysicist the Don Anderson. We've got no idea what drives the plates, how deep they go when they sink into the Earth, how deep the continents extend, how deep mid-ocean ridges are. The basic fundamental questions of plate tectonics and geophysics in general, we just don't have the answers to yet because we've been busy describing the phenomena rather than uh, having the information required to completely understand the phenomenon. On the leading edge of research into this complex frontier of geophysics are Brad Hager and Robert Clayton. The worldwide seismic network records the thousands of earthquakes that rock the Earth each year. Like X-rays, they are a tool for looking inside the Earth. From these waves, scientists infer the density and even temperature of the deep rock. By using this data, Clayton has produced some of the first three-dimensional maps of the Earth's interior. These 100-kilometer slices show the dramatic variation between hotter regions in red and colder regions in blue in the subterranean layers called the mantle. These maps reveal an interior far more complex than we ever imagined. Now we believe that uh, convection currents in the mantle are driving plate tectonics. We believe that upwelling currents are what drive the plates. And we know that when the oceanic lithosphere gets very old, it sinks back down into the mantle. We don't know how deep these phenomena extend. Uh, various theories have been proposed, but they're just theories until we actually have the raw data. In another demonstration of computer modeling, Brad Hager simulates convection through a cross-section of the Earth's mantle. In this model, the solid rock of the Earth's interior, driven by radioactive heating, flows like a liquid over geologic time. Each cycle, taking a few seconds on the computer, actually takes a half billion years inside the Earth. A new frontier opens. Science is just beginning to understand James Hutton's heat engine.
that constantly reconstructs the Earth's surface. 